Hello everybody, welcome to Rachel's studio. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this commission that I just painted of a black lab. And I'm gonna focus today's video on how I painted the eyes. So what you're gonna see today is actual footage that I use in my tutorials for my online students. And I'm gonna just let you listen in to exactly how I teach. I created chapters so you can skip to whatever you want. There's a lot of goodies in the description. Too many to describe here, but check all that out. Check my channel out. I got a lot of good stuff for you guys. That's completely free. But let's get started with this little fella's eyes. And here we go. And now, because I took the time to do those nose holes, it gave the rest of my paper a chance to dry to the buckling stage, which is a beautiful time to paint eyeliner. And I don't know if I've ever demonstrated this. I've done this a lot over the years where I paint the eyeliner on half dry buckling paper, but here I finally get to demonstrate it to you guys. So I've always wanted to demonstrate this to you in a clear way and they worked out so perfectly on this lab. Can you see how the, it's like his eyelids are really completely black, but they're really soft in the reference photo too, but they have a definite shape. So that's how I wanted to paint them. In this painting, I wanted them to be soft, but really hold their shape and stay really dark. So the way you do that is with really thick cream consistency paint, get all the water out of the heel of that brush and just get maybe a little dot of water on the tip and a bunch of cream consistency paint, maybe practice first, but you'll see how much control you have. And, and I just, you know, I got it perfect. It's just these little eyeliners, dark eyelids just were, they were singing my song, making me a happy little artist because they were blossoming out just the right amount to make them look soft, but still hold their shape, which is also really important. You can see the under eye areas getting dry, but that's okay. carefully looking at my reference photo to really make sure I'm getting the shape right. And by the way, these eyes, even though I was really careful, they still need a little reshaping. So I'll have to do that later. So I want to get in some eyes and the only reason I'm doing the eyes now is because I like to have them done and I, I like to have them looking at me as I paint the rest of the painting because it really adds some vitality to the whole, whole painting. It adds a whole different energy to have the eyes in, especially if they come out nicely. So uh, a lot of times people will ask me, what should I paint first? The eyes, the background, the nose, what? Uh, whatever you want it really doesn't matter you just paint what suits you and I just like to paint the eyes early in the painting a lot of times so that the painting takes on a vitality and starts coming alive for me which is exciting and keeps me energized through the painting I use some milk consistency cobalt blue in half the eye to create a look of reflection of the sky. And then you can see the other half I'm putting in milk consistency, burnt sienna. Very much unlike the reference, but this is just the underpainting. And I'm establishing the brown color of the eye, which is the local color. Local color is the actual color of the thing you're painting. And it's those brown pupils. And I knew the top half of the eye would be dark, mostly black, with a little bit of blue highlight from the sky. And the bottom of the eye would be mostly the iris. So that's why I chose to paint it that way. Now I'll work on other parts of the painting while the eyes dry. Then I'm ready to start the second stage of painting the eyes, which is putting in the darks. First, I'm gonna get my brush wet. 
and make sure that it's nice and clean, which it is for the most part. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. squeeze the water out of my brush. And then I'm going to dip just okay. the tip in and I'm going to get these eyes wet. And the idea is let them dry a little bit to about buckling stage, which won't take long with a very small amount of water I'm putting, and then drop in some cream consistency lamp black to create a really dark but soft pupil. Let's see what we get. Maybe do a test first. Pick up some nice black that's already dried on my palette with my damp brush. Dip just the tip into my water and then pick up some more paint. And let's do a little dot test. That's really quite perfect. It's holding its shape, but merging softly. Where I want it to, but then it dried. So I'm going to get this brush clean. I think it's already pretty clean. Squeeze out all the water. So mm -hmm. just get a little dip of water, squeeze it gently, and then touch this edge that got a little hard on me. And also, I want to get this area wet down in here. this has some really thick detail. Okay, now my paper is too dry, so I'm going to go in, clean out my brush, get a little bit of water at the tip, and then gently squeeze a little bit out. So I still have a bit of water, but not too much. And I'm going to soften this whole bit there that I just did. The very tippy tip and just to barely get a little bit of water on there and then pick up some cream consistency paint and drop it under that moist paper that I just created and see it's already drying so clean out my brush squeeze out all the excess water do a few ring ring outs dip just the tip in and then touch to this still moist edge to soften that edge. I do not want that to be a hard edge in the eye. We'll let that all dry and see what we think. And if it needs more, we can do more, but that's a good place to stop and see what we think. We do a little push here. I'm putting some clear water to push into these wet black areas just to make sure that this light area in the eye stays really light because that's important. Now I'm gonna dip just the brush tip in my water and then I'm going to moisten this whole eye. And because I've masked out the highlights, I can just moisten the whole thing and not worry about it. And I'm kind of dotting with my brush so that the clear water explodes onto the paper and it gets a little bit more wet than this one. Because this eye taught me that I need to work with a little bit more water, but not much. <laughs> it's just really, in fact, I'm going to go in and now I'm going to sop up the extra water. So you really just have to get a feel for it. And now I'm going to just dip the tip of my brush in the water and get some cream consistency paint. And try to repeat what I just, it's just drying so, so fast. But if I can get those soft margins, I'll consider this a victory. That, that did a lot better than my other eye because I kind of understood it's the climate of the, you know, today's climate will make it dry a little bit different than yesterday. So you have to kind of let your painting teach you as you go. And each day is different because of the weather changes. All right, now I'm just going to continue to build this painting up. And while you're watching this Footage, I would love to invite you to come join me on Patreon 
or join me on my YouTube membership. I just started a new thing on my Patreon, which I'm really excited about, where I have a special offer. I don't know how long I'll keep it up, but if you join for a whole year, you can also get originals or and or prints mailed to you on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on which tier you choose. So I'd love to have you join me there. All right, I just didn't remove the masking. Now I'm just going to refine these little white highlights in the eyes, which I always do. So I get this question a lot, when should you remove the masking? You remove the masking when the painting in the area is pretty much done and you know that you don't need to be careful about saving the whites anymore because you've got all the main parts of the area painted. So I felt like the pupils were dark enough. I felt like the brown part of the iris was dark enough and I needed to get the masking off so I could refine the little highlights. And so I roughly looked at the reference photo to inform how I painted these highlights, but I also made a few executive decisions and the Sometimes what I do is I'll make the highlight really nice and curved and like in the in the dog's left our right eye I just left a little half moon crescent there at the top. And then on this eye I'm leaving a little bit more, but I'm just painting carefully around the edges to refine those pure white highlights. Getting some burnt sienna, mixing it up nicely in my brush. I put a little bit of M. Graham Napthal Red to give it a little bit more oomph. And i um, getting the corner of the eye a little darker. Now I'm just getting the whole thing darker. I just felt like it needed a little more color. And here I'm just putting some more burnt sienna, at the bottom half of the iris to add some more color there. So that is pretty much it for the eyes. I'd love for you to join me on my Patreon to watch this and over 60 other tutorials. There's so much to learn in this tutorial about layering, using the push technique to create fur textures, masking, doing a soft background, the trees. Also, right about during this stage, the client decided that they wanted the dog to look darker. So this is the cool thing about watercolor. You can let everything completely dry. It will set the paint and then you can go over it with a whole glaze, which is what you just saw me do. And then you see me here working with my scrubber brushes to lift out highlights. I've got a whole video on scrubber brushes, so I would encourage you to watch that, explore my other playlists, my beginner series and also my fur series that I've been doing. And I signed and take off, took off the tape and this is what we've got. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe, like I said, because I upload new content every week unless my life completely falls apart. Thanks so much for joining me. I really enjoy talking to you guys in the comments, so please leave me a comment and chat me up, ask me questions. I love that. And if you'd like to watch this in real time with full voiceover, like you're gonna see with the eyes, you can join my Patreon where you will access this and over 60 other tutorials too. And I'll see you next week. Bye everybody. Hey everyone. <laughs> okay, yeah. Weird, right? Mm. Oh well, that's me. <laughs> yeah. You ready to do this video with me today, kitty? You gonna stay up here? You just want water. You want me for my water. Hmm.